is brought to you on Eurosport by Baileys. Ladies and gentlemen, the first event tonight will be the men's 1,000 meters. There will be a total of eight heats. And please note that the two first skaters in each heat will qualify. Tall, left channel, right channel. Hello and welcome to the Hammer Olympic Amphitheatre. You're watching the early stages the of the qualifying sound from Hawkins Hall in the short track channel. speed skating. Can you give us effects, please? Give us effects. Sorry, sorry. I can tell you that Wilf... I can tell you that Wilf O'Reilly will be going in the next heat. In heat number seven, we've had six heats of the eight already. And Wilf O'Reilly will be going next. Tonight we will have the qualifying, then the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and the finals of the men's 1,000 meters. There are going to be two distances, the 500 and the 1,000. It's the 1,000 we're concentrating on tonight. And also the women's 3,000 meters relay, where Britain do not have an interest. And this is the uh, replay of heat number six. You'll be seeing that later. And uh, everybody here crossing their fingers. We've already had uh, one British competitor, Nicky Gooch, who has gone. I won't give you his result. A little altercation there, and there could well be a disqualification. So there might be a little bit of a gap before Wilf O'Reilly steps up. It's not the worst heat he could possibly have had. He takes on Campbell from Canada, Loscos from France, and Lee from China. Chris Howarth alongside me, Simon Reid, as we await with bated breath heat number seven. There's Lee from China. Ladies and gentlemen, please observe that it's entirely prohibited. Just 18 years old from Yilin. So please note. No and this is, on paper, the mo not the most difficult the heat, Chris. Well, that's right, but you can, never can rule out the Canadians or the Chinese. Derek Campbell, number two, is uh, in O'Reilly's heat, and uh, the Chinese, number 14, Li. And uh, this sport really is in the lap of the gods. Uh, as you saw in the replay there, anything can happen. And uh, Wilf O'Reilly has found that out to his own cost in the Alberville games. So uh, it's, a, it's a game really of either getting a good start, staying out in front, or just biding your time, looking for the gap, and keeping out of trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a slight delay as there has been the possibility of some irregularities in this heat. It looks like there were uh, the referees. Uh, there was a disqualification in the previous heat, and Bradbury from Australia looks as if he has been disqualified. Indeed, he has. And uh, no, it's Blanchard. Blanchard from Belgium is disqualified. That's why the delay is. And so the two from that heat, which you'll see later, go through from Korea and from China, which takes us on to heat number seven. There's Wilf O'Reilly, 29 years old now, just about the oldest competitor in this short track. Wilf, of course, who won gold in Calgary when it was a demonstration sport. Four world championship golds to his credit. Five world championship silvers and has never been out of the top five in the world in the past decade. But, of course, mixed with tragedy, his girlfriend, Monique Velzebo, paralyzed after a training accident and is in remedial care at a clinic in Amsterdam. But Wilf wants to, to carry on. And uh, he's doing so with very much with her blessing. There's Wilf in lane number two. In lane one, then, Loscos from France. In lane number two, former world champion, skater number 21, Wilf O'Reilly, Great Britain. Still one of the predominant figures in the sport and is a canny competitor, and that may well help him here. Derek Campbell, Canada. Derek Campbell from Canada, 21 years old, from Cambridge. In lane number four, skater number 14, Lee Tichuan, China. 
and uh, Li Jiajun from China. Those are the four. Two to qualify for the quarterfinals. And away they go, and uh, O'Reilly nearly went there right in the opening. But it's he who leads, and he watches as Lee takes to the front at the moment. So it's Lee in front from O'Reilly. Campbell making a move on the outside. Nine laps of the track, 110 meters around. Well, O'Reilly trying to keep out of trouble. It's a sensible race, just to stay in the front. He'll keep looking behind. He'll sense the Canadian, Derek Campbell, just sneaking, sneaking in on the inside there. So now Wilf O'Reilly down into second place. Campbell leads then from O'Reilly. Making a move on the inside is Lee from China, but he has to duck outside again. Got to keep inside those markers. O'Reilly takes it up. O'Reilly from Campbell. Four laps to go. O'Reilly first. Campbell second, Lee third. Loscos out the back, but making his move now. It's going to be close. O'Reilly cuts in. And he's dominating the race at the moment. Campbell at the moment content to stick in behind him. O'Reilly and Campbell. Two to qualify. Making his move now on the inside is Lee. And O'Reilly is back in third, but quickly makes his counter. It's not good enough into the last lap, and O'Reilly now has got to make a move, and it doesn't look as if it's going to happen. It's Campbell first. Lee second, and O'Reilly, I'm afraid, does not make it through to the quarterfinals. And when it really mattered, he didn't seem to have the ammunition. Now that's right, on the last two laps, he, he looked as though he was struggling a little bit. The pace of the race was quite quick, and uh, he certainly looked tired on the last two laps. Well, I said you never can rule out the Chinese, and a fabulous move from Li Yailan, just to move up on the inside, sneak in behind Derek Campbell. Campbell read the race well, and uh, he made sure of his qualification. It's not the end of the road, though, for Wilf. He's predominantly a sprinter. The sprint event begins on Thursday with the heat, so he has a second bite of the cherry, and that is his key event. Well, that's right. We wish him all the best of luck for that, but uh, confirmation just come up on our computer that uh, it's Campbell and Lee that go through. Well, here, the, uh, towards the critical part of the race, O'Reilly seemed to have it made, but here is where Campbell made his move, and Lee, number 14, tucked in in third. As you say, when it really mattered. There's Lee making his move on the inside. Cam Campbell in second there. O'Reilly cuts him off, but later on, the same move was to pay dividends. That's right, that was a fabulous move from O'Reilly. He really shut the door on Lee and nipped in inside Blackburn while all the commotion was going on. But then the same fate worked the opposite way. There, O'Reilly trying to get back inside Campbell, but didn't have the legs. Campbell in two steps just accelerated too fast, and O'Reilly down into third place. Nothing really he could do. Not particularly fast times, but we're not looking towards world record times here. The world record is 128.47. And uh, some five seconds outside there. Olympic record 137.6. Big cheer for Elgerton of Norway on the inside. Skater number 31 from Japan, Yon Oematsu. From Japan, Yon Oematsu, 21 years old, from Gifu. Yvonne Vitre in lane number three. Skater number 46, Christopher Nicholson, New Zealand. Chris Nicholson. World champion in relay. Member of the Yvonne relay Vitre, squad that won the World 33, Championship in Beijing last Chai year. Of Korea, world champion in 3,000 meters. And uh, Chai Ji Hun. 3,000 meter world champion. This, of course, comfortably short of his best. He's on the outside. And presumably try and make a bit of a pace here to make it a real race. But beaten into third place on the corner. It's Elgerton from Norway who make the early running, but now tucked in to second place. It's Uematsu from Japan. 
Umatsu from Elgerton. Che in third place for Korea. So Umatsu really dictating the pace here. But the Korean number 32, Che, coming around the outside very quickly indeed and already opens up a very big gap. Six laps to go and he'll obviously try and make his stamina tell. And uh, Rob Biscuit is behind as their big finishes. And as long as the pace stays hot, he has a real chance. But once it becomes a tactical battle, he could be left struggling in the last few moments. Big cheer then. And it's Elgerton who leads for Norway. And he has a good lead too. Uematsu in second place. But now the Korean makes his move. Here comes Che. Che makes his move. It's Che then in the lead from Elgerton. Che for Korea. Elgerton from Norway in second place. And he looks comfortable in front. Into the last lap, and Che is home, but Elgerton being threatened here. It's Yomatsu threatening Elgerton, but I think the Norwegian's going to be all right in a big cheer as Elgerton gets home in second place. Che, though, a comfortable leader for Korea. Well, that really was a tremendous performance from the Norwegian. He took it up, up halfway through the race, hung on in there. The Korean nipped inside, got the lead, but... Uh, Bjorna Elgerton hung on, and I thought over the last two laps at least, Jan Umatsu from Japan would have got the second place, but the Norwegian really hanging on in there. A lot of grit, a lot of determination. He did really well. Time one of the fastest, 132.11. Che the winner, Elgerton in second place. And here we see the slow motion. And uh, Che just nipping around the outside, taking the lead. And at that point, Elgerton down in third place. Umatsu there in second. Elgerton just taking a look around the outside. Umatsu coming up the inside. And uh, Elgerton taking advantage of that. Very wide. Gets down in the knees. Steep inside edge off that right foot. And the Norwegian goes into the lead. Nips in front of Umatsu. And just look at the technique of these guys, really getting over on those edges, digging into the ice. And there, the Korean, Che, into the lead. And blocking Elgerton all the way. Confirmation. Che wins for Korea. Elgerton second for Norway. And those are the end of the heats. Number nine, Derek Campbell, Canada. Number ten, Mark Gagnon, Canada. Number so, uh, disappointment China, for Wilf O'Reilly, but without giving 20, everything away, it's not all doom and gloom China, for 20, the British contingent. And I can tell you that right the way through this evening, for the next uh, two and a half hours, you'll be able to see the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals of the men's 1,000 meters, alongside the semifinals and final in the ladies' 3,000 meters relay. So, plenty to enjoy. I hope you'll be back with Chris and I in Hammer in just a moment or two. First few heats before you joined us live, and uh, they really did have some quite dramatic occurrences. We pick it up with heat number one. Australia, world champion in relay. World Relay Champion for Australia, Kieran Hansen in lane two. But there is the reigning world champion at this distance, Marc Gagnon for Canada. But a hot race because just before introduced was Marco Villeman from Italy, who could be the new major star of the sport, the world record holder at 500 metres. Villeman for Italy in lane Number one. Well, start with the to the and he tucks in at the back, and it's uh, Vulleman and Gagnon who are obviously the favourites in this race. And it's Gagnon who leads at the moment from Hansen 
of Australia. Gagnon first, Hansen second. And then slipping into third is Willemann, who has a dynamite change of pace. And Bachelin from Mongolia in fourth place at the moment and shouldn't, in all honesty, be a big factor here. Well, this is a very tactical race. Uh, Marc Gagnon setting the pace. Hansen just nipping in behind. And, oh, Bachelin from Mongolia there almost went, but uh, hanging on in there, losing the pace a little bit. Still Gagnon leading with Hansen in second place. Vulleman, the Italian, in third. Goes wide. Now Hansen nips into the lead. Vulleman trying to take advantage of it, coming up the inside of Gagnon. Gagnon hanging on the, in there, fighting for his place. And Vulleman has been dropped. Quite extraordinary. Gagnon leads, Hansen second, and Vullerman, the 500 meters world record holder, is in third place, and it doesn't look good for him at the moment. Can he overtake Hansen? Making his move now on the inside, but he's blocked again. No way forward, and Hansen's doing a terrific job. It's easy for Gagnon out in front. He's coasting home. Gagnon wins, Hansen second, and the big shock is that Vullerman of Italy the 500 meters world champion and world record holder does not make it through to the quarterfinals. Well, there was a real kerfuffle between Gagnon and Hansen, and uh, Vulleman got himself in a right pickle, lost a lot of pace and just unable to get back in contention. Hansen closing the door on him, and uh, Vulleman letting his weight get too far back, unable to accelerate down the straight, and lost it on the final lap. Well... That really is terrific for Hansen, 22 years old from Sydney. Reserve for the Australian team. Which uh, won the 91 World Championship. Well, a little story about uh, Bachelin, the Mongolian. He uh, was preparing in Germany, didn't make the qu qualification times, so uh, he made an eight-day train journey back to his hometown, only to find that uh, some skaters had withdrawn from the championships and uh, was told that he was able to compete, so he got back on the train another eight days later, arrived here last Tuesday and uh, increased the number of nations from 66 to 67 competing in this Winter Olympics. Great for him. Didn't qualify, but he was in it. So the two that do qualify are in first place Gagnon and in second place Hansen for Australia. Those two make it through to the quarterfinals. So now we move on to heat number four. Eric dives off there for Holland. Skater number 33. Kim of Korea. Yes, the winner of this distance, the 1,000 meters in Albeville, Kim ki from South Korea. And here's a major story. Skater number 53, the former world champion in long track, Eric Flame of the United States. Yes, former world track long champion, silver medalist at Calgary in long track, and now really making an impact in the short track, 26-year-old American Eric Flame. Flame on the outside. Kim in the center. Dybelshoff for the Netherlands at the back at the moment. It should be between Kim and Flame, but as we've seen, you can be sure of nothing in this sport. And that's right, it's so easy to get blocked and uh, lose your rhythm, but it's Flame out in front with Kim in second place. Dybelshoff at the back at the moment. Flame dictating the pace, taking it easy. Kim, you see, just tucking in behind, not wanting to work too hard keeping his rhythm, keeping his distance from flame, so being sure of no accidents. Those two will just want to make sure that they qualify safely. It's an amazingly tough sport and so unforgiving. Just one moment's lack of concentration or one little bit of bad luck. You've got to watch out all the time for the bad luck that could haunt you. An impressive acceleration from Kim there, the Olympic champion. Just nipping inside Eric Flame, Flame staying with him, and Divalsoff having a look down the inside, unable to make any impression. Flame just in behind Kim, but trying to take a look around the outside, but Kim with just two strides accelerates once again. Looking very good indeed, the Olympic champion. And has this comfortably. In second place is Flame, and Divalsoff is just being left a little now at the back, doing well to stay in touch. Divalsoff, a member of the 
5,000 relay men's team won the world title for Holland back in 1990, but he's not up to this and into the final lap. Kim, a comfortable winner. Flame relaxes two in second place. Those two are through and uh, had pretty lucky draw. There's no seeding here. So you never know quite what you're going to have, but I think he would have been quite content to be drawn in that heat and won it easing up. Well, that's right, they really did make light work of it. A couple of times there, Flame had a look around the outside. Perhaps a little boost to the ego, boost to the confidence to uh, win his qualification round over the reigning champion. But uh, playing safe, and uh, he knows the most important thing is to get over that finish line in one piece. Kim there looking very smooth, and I was very, very impressed with the way he could just turn on the power uh, with little effort and in a very short space of time. There you see Eric Flame nipping in front, but it wasn't long before Kim got the lead back. No, he was so unflustered, wasn't he, which is part of the game. And that's why, although you have to have very quick reactions and strong quickness in every fiber of your body, the reason why there are quite a lot of guys who you'd think were relatively old for this is you have to be canny. You have to have a lot of race experience, which is why Wilf Riley, Wilf Riley at 29 is not necessarily too old to win an Olympic title here, although, as we've seen, it's already a bad move for him in this 1,000 meters. We hope for the best for him in 500. So we move on now to heat number five, and they're the main protagonists. Sergei Kobizev of Russia. Fred Blackburn from Canada, bronze medalist in the 3,000 meters in Denver in 92, and a silver medalist in this event in Albeville. There's Kobizev. Shouldn't be a factor here. But Blackburn certainly should be in good form, silver medalist in Albeville in this distance. And the European champion at 500 and 1,000 meters. And uh, Andrew Nicholson, 23 years old from Auckland. Difficult time for him. But New Zealanders have a strong pedigree in this sport. at the start. Some skaters have to deliberately, deliberately make do with second or even third place while the drama unfolds in front of them. And it's Nicholson who leads at the moment for New Zealand. In second place is Blackburn. Fagoni is third for Italy. Blackburn probably goes into this as a, just a minor favorite. He and Fagoni should qualify. Fagoni down in third place, Blackburn in second, the New Zealander out in front. Nicholson, Nicholson, Blackburn taking a look round the outside. Is he going to make his move? Fagoni having a look. Blackburn. Well, the New Zealander just increases the pace, but Blackburn too quick for him. He comes round the outside. Fagoni taking a look. He's got to keep with Blackburn now. He needs that second place. So now, Blackburn, Fagoni. Yes, and. Uh wonderful change of place there from Blackburn. It was all over in about four or five strides, and you see Fagoni's gone with him, and the rest suddenly are nowhere. And that is real class. There are two races going on here, and only one that matters. In fact, neither of them matter, as long as these two are, are clever. Fagoni, I don't think he's quite aware of how far he is in front, but uh, the first two positions are settled. To the bell, and these two comfortably through, and now they can relax. But uh, Blackburn was very, very impressive there. And he and Fagoni qualify with ease. But that move round the far bend was mighty impressive. Well, Blackburn very quick as well, but Fagoni made up an awful lot of ground because he got himself in all kinds of problems with about three laps to go. But uh, he turned on the pace and uh, easy qualification for him as well. And uh, if they hadn't eased off at the end, that would have been a very quick time indeed. So a very impressive run from both Blackburn and Fagoni. 
Nicholson for New Zealand, who made most of the running in the first half of the race, probably disappointed, finishing down in fourth place. Here we see Blackburn in the front, Nicholson for New Zealand making a move around the outside at that point, Fagoni at the back of the pack. But uh, that was Nicholson's move, and from that situation there, he did take the first half of the race, but uh, just watch Blackburn here. Two quick strides out of the bend, he goes into the lead, Nicholson now down into second place, and Fagoni at the back of the pack, coming round the outside, really turns on the pressure. So Blackburn and Fagoni. The qualifiers, Fagoni with a new Italian record. And those two have a pretty easy time. You'll be back with us in just a moment or two. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 8 p.m., which is in about two and a half minutes from now, which will commence the quarter The quarterfinals finals. only a couple of minutes this away, so there may not be time to show you that. From the World Championship in Beijing last year. But we've seen already Mark what an unforgiving Campbell business this can be. Just one moment and you're out. And uh, Wilf O'Reilly is now going to have to concentrate on Thursday when the 500 meters, which is his number one heat, begin. Big sport, this of course in the UK, particularly, and a growing sport as people realize what drama it can produce. It's, uh, there's been no problem filling the happy theater here. Well, the skaters now coming out for the uh, start of the racing. And uh, quite an atmosphere in here. Really is a, an exciting sport. Well, we're not going to have time, I'm afraid, to show you Nikki Gucci's heat because they're coming out now for the quarterfinals. But I can tell you. quarterfinals now and uh, I can tell you that Nikki Gooch has made it through to the quarterfinal but uh, in this first heat we've got uh, Che from Korea Campbell from Canada Fagoni from Italy and Hansen for Australia those four make it through to this first quarterfinal Che the uh, 3,000 meter specialist from Korea Campbell who had such a canny race Fagoni who Broke the Italian record in the heat. And Hansen, who did such a good job for qualifying for Australia. We saw Fagoni have a good battle with uh, Blackburn in the fifth heat. He's got the other Canadian this time. Campbell. So uh, the skate is just warming up. And uh, interesting to see. Now the Italian fares in this. He'll be in lane one, so he's got a good draw on the inside. And remember, important to get a good start. If you can get out in front, keep out of trouble, that's probably the best place to be. Not a discipline for the faint-hearted, this. And of course, you've got to keep your wits around about you as well during the race, because the situation, as we've seen in the heats, can change in a matter of seconds. So these skaters, if they make it through to the final, will have had four races in under two hours. So it's tough going, both physically and mentally, because you can appreciate the mental application that's needed here. Fagoni from Italy in lane one. The Australian Kieran Hansen in lane two. Skater number nine, Derek Campbell of Canada. Derek Campbell for Canada, who have a very strong hand. Chai Hong of Korea, the world champion in 3,000 meters. Chai Ji Hoon from Korea. On the outside, Vagoni on the inside, then Hansen. Then Campbell, 
and Chai on the outside. And uh, you can expect Chai to force the pace eventually. Although at the moment it's Hansen who leads. Hansen from Campbell. In third place, Fagoni. But watch out for a move from the man at the back, Chai. He will be, I would suspect, the man to make the first significant move. It's quite interesting there, uh, Campbell, who you'd expect to get right through to the final, would, be, would have been looking for the race to start at a slow pace. And uh, Fagoni, almost losing uh, his grip there, looked like he stepped on a block and is out of contention. And Chai has made the move, we thought, and he immediately opens up a two, three metre gap. And that's bad news for Fagoni. He's trying all he can now to build and get back there, build his momentum, but it's not happening. He's taking a lot out of himself, four laps to go but not a breathtaking pace, and so Fagoni still has a sliver of a chance, but it's very small. He's done very well to nearly get back in touch, but it's still out there in front. Che, Campbell in second, the two of them pulling away. But this is a very strong comeback from Fagoni. Now, can he qualify? Two go through to the semi-final. It's still Che in front, Campbell second. Is there a way through? Fagoni doing all he can but he goes down, and that's the end of his challenge. And it's Che who wins for Korea. Campbell in second place. A brave attempt from Fagoni, and I wonder, there was contact there. Did you see if there was anyone's fault, or do you think there was a natural clash? No, I think that was uh, quite natural. I don't think Campbell was really blocking Fagoni. Fagoni was going all out, though. Uh, he knew he had a lot to do and must have been feeling very tired because he'd pulled back so much. And just looking at the finishing time, the Olympic record is 130.76. That was a very, very quick race indeed. Um, it was around 1.31. So uh, we should get confirmation of the finishing time. But uh, interestingly, Campbell at the beginning was trying to slow the pace down. Hansen came out very, very quickly right at the start, trying to take up the pace. But uh, Campbell trying to dictate it. There you can see Fagoni's first slip. And there's and, Che making his move. Well, he just took advantage of that, didn't he? Saw the gap, accelerated in two strides, and away he went. Black, uh, Campbell did well to keep with him. And Fagoni there doing everything he possibly can. Blackburn. Um, Campbell just giving an extra big push to get out in front and just clipping Fagoni's skate. Well, didn't Fagoni do well to keep on his feet? Yes, he did, and uh, it was a brave attempt. He's looking for a disqualification there, looking across at the officials. But 10 out of 10 for effort, because after the earlier mistake, I wrote him off prematurely. And he came back strongly. Now, the judges are having a look, and there may be cause for some intervention here, although we thought it was six of one, half a dozen of the other. Well, Blackburn, um, Campbell, obviously uh, needing to accelerate there, and uh, the faster you go, the more extension you need, and I don't honestly think there was anywhere for Fagoni to go. He tried to get up the inside, and there wasn't really a gap. Now, uh, interesting to see what the uh, officials here have done with that. In my book, uh, Che obviously going through. And uh, the Italian coach there appealing. But uh, I think he's got a tough job in his hands. I'm pretty sure that Campbell will qualify. Well, the result's coming up on our computer, and uh, it's gone the other way. Fagoni has been disqualified. So, in the end, it was immaterial. Che and Campbell go through. Hansen in third place, but it's academic, really. Fagoni is disqualified, which is uh, a little disappointing for him. Very disappointing, in fact. But particularly after the mammoth effort he made to try and get back on terms. And these two skaters are qualified. Number three, Kieran Hansen, Australia, and skater number 24. So there are the results of the first quarter-final. Che, the winner, Campbell second. They go through to the semi-final, and we move on to quarter-final number two. Terao from Japan, Lee from Korea, Richard Niazelski from Australia, and once again, Flame from the USA, the man who won a world title.
in long track and also a silver medalist in Calgary in long track six years ago. Lee from Korea. Yvonne Matou in lane number two, skater number 53, Eric Flame of the United States. Eric Flame. Massive support here from the American contingent, and what a story he is. The pre Olympic event, which happened, of course, here in Lillehammer, and he was second in that event and is in pretty good form. And here's Richard Nizilski. So Lee on the inside and a full start there. A start not so vitally important in 1,000 metres as it is in 500, but you want to feel comfortable through those first two bends. Well, we've said before that uh, it's a great...